Hello and uh, welcome back. And uh, so now I'm going to continue to move on with this little uh, breadboard project in the uh, Pro Mini. Uh, you can see that I've uh, modified the board again a little bit. I've added some additional features. Um, one is, notice the, the, uh, the VCC is now connected to the red bus on my, uh, my breadboard. Um, I have also tied the red bus across. So both sides of the breadboard are linked and will be getting voltage from ultimately from the, the Pro Mini board. I've also built this really simple switch. It's hard to see here. I'll pull this out. I have a wire which is basically stripped and it's sitting in the ground. And I've made this sort of lever which is stripped so this way when it touches here it will in fact conduct, uh, allow electrons to flow through this bus. Uh, directly to ground. Um, the other major things that I've added here, I've put a pull-up resistor um, right here, which is up to the positive bus, okay, and then it is then ultimately connected by this yellow wire over to pin 10, okay. So in code, what I'm going to do is if you look at the code, you can see I have all of these ports, just like in the last one, set to output. Okay, and I've taken that one port. Look at that. Okay, I've got those all set to output, and you can see already it's set. Okay, so this is the the uh, the one, two, the four. Okay, one, two, four, eight. The four bit is set to input with a zero. So that means that pin 10 is set for input. Okay, it's going to be looking for a signal. So right now, when the thing is running, voltage is power is coming out of here into the positive bus. It's coming across. You saw it's connected on the other side. It's flowing along. It goes into this resistor. This switch is not connected. It's not grounded, which means the electrons then flow directly through the yellow wire and into pin 10. Pin 10. So the chip naturally thinks that it's getting a signal. It is high. When I close this switch, okay, it is low. And if you watch the LEDs, you can see that the direction of the lights changes. I did that with a very simple if-then statement. I should start with this, though. I did create a variable, called it value, set it equal to zero to start with. Um, and then down here in code, I have, it takes in a digital read on that pin. In pin is pin 10. All right, I can actually, just, I could have even skipped that. Let's just call it pin 10, okay? So I've got a digital read coming into pin 10 if it is absolutely positively uh, set to zero. All right, that means it is grounded. It is low. If it is set low, then it's going to run this operation. Okay. If it is not, in other words, an else statement, it's going to run this operation and you can see they're different here. This one goes generally in this direction. This one goes generally in this direction. Okay? So if you watch it, you can see that I ground it and the lights switch direction. And if you aren't seeing that it isn't really clear on the video, let's just make this Let's just change this. Let's just make this uh, flash, for example. Let's set all of these high. Let's get rid of these. We'll put in one, two, three, four. There we go. And so we'll make it so all of these are then low. And we'll just get rid of all of this. And in theory now, it should just flash on and off at the delay interval. So let's load it up. Okay, so it's running the else statement. It's not set low. Hook it up. And 
the flashes. Okay. Pretty simple. So I'm going to go ahead and build on to this circuit. And eventually we're going to use these as feelers for a robot so they can navigate with uh, wire brushes. So hopefully that was helpful and uh, we'll continue moving on. Thanks.